Do they believe that? Amen. 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 Are we just those type of people that only pray for ourselves and need my phone? No. no. Way, no. <laughs> Amen. Are we the ones that pray for everybody and want to see everybody blessed? Amen. Amen. Imagine living in a house where all the windows that you have in your house are turned into mirrors. It'd be kind of strange, wouldn't it? Think about it. How would you like living like that? You wouldn't be able to see outside. You wouldn't see the sun, the trees, the clouds, your friends walking by, or anything else. And it would also make your house much darker at night because no light can get through a mirror. The same thing happens when you and I think mainly about ourselves. Instead of light, there's darkness. We're only uh, enlightened by the light that is within us or in the room. Life gets gloomy for us. We stop seeing the beautiful things around us and exciting way we can help other people. We only see ourselves. It's like living in a house where all the windows have been replaced with mirrors. Let's be more like the person that God wants us to be. Let's think more about other people and less about ourselves. May our eyes be more open like a window. Amen. And that can see the world around us and less like the mirror that only lets us see ourselves. In other words, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, oh neighbor, oh neighbor. God wants you, God wants you to be a window Christian. Put your hands together and give the Lord a hand. Thank you, and thank you, BJ and others, for sharing in our demonstration. Now, for the word. Turn in your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter number 18. Again, this is Youth Sunday. We always want to do something that was encouraging to our youth. Was anybody blessed by that little demonstration? Amen. Is anybody gain anything from that? Glory to God. Amen. Stand on your feet as we recite from Matthew chapter 18, verse 1 through 6. And I'm going to ask that you would read it right along with me, whatever the version is that you have. Amen. If you don't have a Bible, stand with someone, get in their picture, amen, and share the word of God with them. Are we there? Reading from the King James Version, the Word of God says, At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted and become the little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whosoever shall receive one such little child in my name, receiveth me. But whosoever shall offend one of these little ones, which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged around his neck, and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. For just a little while, we want to talk and teach on this topic, a lesson in humility. A lesson in humility. If we were to choose a subtopic, it simply would be this, the pathway to greatness. Amen. Amen. The pathway to greatness. Humility is defined as the personal quality of being free from arrogance, from pride, and having an accurate estimate of one's worth, an accurate estimate of one's worth. In other words, you know who you are, and you know whose you are. And you don't have any ax to grind or any point to prove. You just simply are who God says that you are. Humility is not denying the power that you have, but it is realizing that the power comes through you and not from you, according to Fred Smith. Amen. The pathway to greatness is many times littered with obstacles. How many know that you don't get to be great just overnight? Right. And how many know that you don't get to be great without going through some things? Right. No pain, no... Amen. Hello, somebody. Right. Amen. For anyone who's in a Weight Watchers program or anyone who's going through a fitness program or anything like that, you know the sacrifices you're having to make in order to get to your goal. Am I right about it? Right. And let me tell you from personal experience, amen, I would much rather be eating me some fried chicken, some corn bread, and some collard greens, amen. But I got a goal that I'm trying to reach, amen. Right. So therefore, I got to stay 
stick with it. Amen. No pain, no gain. Amen. You ain't ever expect to accomplish anything in God. You got to get a plan and then you got to stay with it. Work the plan. The plan works. Amen. Glory to God. We must understand that God desires most of us from us. It's not an outward sacrifice, but he desires an inward, humble spirit. Am I right about it? Yeah. Having a humble spirit is revealed in several ways. Number one, recognition of one's own sinfulness before a holy God. When B.J. was looking in that mirror, he was only seeing his reflection. And the only time that we should see anyone else's reflection, it simply means that you're probably in the same boat. All right. All right. All right. You don't have room to talk about them, yeah. and they don't have room to talk about you. Amen. So instead of spending time talking and complaining about each other, try to encourage each other and right. really promote each Thank other you. to just do better. Turn yeah. to your neighbor and say, we need to do better. We need, we need to do better. better. And some of you really need to do better. Uh, Amen. Amen. Second, obedience to God and his word. We need to learn how to not only obey God, but we need to learn how to read and study his word and then apply his word to our everyday lives. Am I right about it? Mm -hmm. Then thirdly, being wholly submitted unto God, our entire mind, body, and spirit. Can I tell you one of the reasons why we don't enjoy the successes in life that we think that we should? Because we want to go through life doing half-hearted things. Mm -hmm. How many know that you got to see the whole plan through? Right. You can't start on it today quit on it tomorrow, pick it back up the next day, and then next week decide that that plan really right. wasn't for you. Right. Am I right about it? Amen. God wants us to make up our minds what it is that he desires for us to do. Hear what he says do, and then just do it. Am I talking to anybody in here? Amen. Amen. Now I feel the need to tell you that we're not talking about being shy. When we talk about being humble, that's not what I'm talking about. There's a lot of people who don't like being out front who get embarrassed easily when they're called upon to do something publicly, but we're not talking about them. Amen? Amen. Because so you can have a person that may be shy, but in actuality, they have the worst or the poorest attitude. Right. All right. Am I right about it? All it takes is to spend a little time with them, and you will learn pretty soon that, you know what, I'd rather not be around you. Right. And it's okay to be that way. Amen? Amen. Right. It's okay to be able to tell some people that they are messing with your parade. They are raining on your parade. You know what? I'm going to get up and I'm going to move somebody else right. right. Especially right. when it comes down to Amen. church. A lot of times people will sit by folks who are talking, chewing gum, popping that man, doing everything else, texting and everything else. Listen, get up and move. Right. Right. I guarantee you if everybody on that pew get up and move pretty soon, folks will start looking. <laughs> Amen. And it's going to stand out. Am I right about it? Amen. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, Let's do it God's way. Let's do it God's Amen. way. In the Old Testament, the Bible has promised blessings to those who are humble. Proverbs 11 and 2 talks and promises us wisdom. When pride cometh, then cometh kind of shame. But with the lowly is wisdom. How many of my athletes in here know this morning, sometimes in order to jump high, you got to get low? All right. Yeah. Am I right about it? Amen. In other words, the higher you go, the lower you need to be. Right. Am I right about it? Amen. In other words, if I'm trying to get to where I'm an athlete and I can jump high, I need two people to come up right here, right with two other people, Katie and Jacob. Stand around, turn and face the audience. Okay, on the count of three, I want you both to just jump. One, two, three. Okay, did anybody see anything first? They did Katie, come in. <laughs> come in a little bit closer. Come on, both of you, right here in the center. All right? Now, on the count of three, I want you both to jump, but I don't want you to bend your knees. I want you to just jump. One, two, three. You bent your knees. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Did anybody see that? Yes. All right, one, two, three again. Jump without bending your knees. Didn't get too high here. In other words, in order to get gravity and to be able to go higher, you got to do what? Get low. When we're trying to get someplace in God, how many know that God wants us to be lowly in spirit? Am I right about it? Stop thinking of ourselves higher than what we ought to think. In other words, we got to humble ourselves, get low, in order to go high. All right. Give them a hand clap. Amen. The second 
thing that we find in the Old Testament that comes to us in the way of a blessing is good tidings. Isaiah 61 and 1 tells us that the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. In other words, if you're meek, you can learn something. Amen? How many of you remember that commercial that used to come on and say you can learn something from a dummy? Yeah. Amen. Amen. See, don't ever get to the point where you feel like you know more than anybody else. And I'm going to tell you right now, don't any of us in here know it all. You can be a rocket scientist, amen, and you still don't know it all. Am I right about it? You can know the nth degree, amen, of the, of the, of the Adam theory, amen, and still don't know it all. All right. In other words, God is saying to us that we have to have a meek and humble spirit. In other words, he wants us to remain teachable. How many know that we can learn something from a baby? Am I right about it? You don't believe me? BJ, come in. See, I'm going to work out this morning, amen. <laughs> BJ, I tell you what, I need $5. Can you help me? Hmm? Talk loud. Why? You don't have $5? Let me see. Do you know somebody that got $5? <laughs> If you can get five dollars from him, let me just hold it for a minute. Go ask him. <laughs> <laughs> now y'all know this. Uh, do you need to know how humble that child was? The child simply said when I asked the question, I need five dollars. And I asked him if he could help me, and he said no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take care of you then. Amen. <laughs> oh! I didn't get just five dollars. Look what I got. I like him. I like him. You know what? These are my best friends. Glory to God. Amen. So see, we all need some friends like that. Amen. Amen. So I was able to ask this child for five dollars. But what I want you to see is that the child was honest. The child said, I can't help you. Why is it that many times when we go to people, in, in, in individuals, and ask them for help, they'll want to lie, pretend like they ain't got it, amen, pretend like they don't know all those type of things, rather than just being honest. And if you really don't have it, just say, I don't have it. Amen. But then when I asked him if he knew somebody that had it, he immediately said what? Yes. All of us ought to know somebody that has something that we need. Satisfying the deed that I had asked him for. Amen. And that was five dollars. He said, Yeah, I'm going to pop up. Amen. <laughs> How many know we can always go to our dad?